if you're a new guitar player or a guitar player that's just looking for a different amp, maybe a practice amp, something that's good at uh, different volumes, stay tuned. I have the perfect practice amp for you. Highly recommend it. So if it's your first time on the One Guitarist channel, I'm Nick. Uh, I do a lot of reviews over here in Detroit, you'll see a lot of Detroit around here, on different uh, different guitar stuff, different guitar tactics, and because I have a lot of camera gear for the channel, you'll see stuff about that too, as well as uh, some video editing tips coming up very soon. So a little bit about me so you can understand why I like this amp. I've been playing for 35 years. I played uh, professionally for about a good four years. That was my sole source of income, and I was touring, I was recording, I was doing a lot of things like that back in the late 90s, early 2000s or so. I had a lot of fun doing that, I learned a lot, but I've been playing for bands ever since uh, ever since I've been like 15. So I'm constantly in bands, so I do make a, uh, that is part of my income is actually being in bands and recording and teaching and uh, doing things like that. So over 35 years of playing and recording and uh, performances all over the place, I've learned a lot about amps and I've had a lot of amps myself. I've always wanted like the perfect practice amp, um, but I just never liked most practice amps. I never liked the sound, I thought their features were toyish, they weren't really good. So I was really iffy about getting a practice amp. So about two years ago, I got tired of pulling around my Mesa Boogie rig all over the place between practices and rehearsals. So I wanted something I could keep at home that I could practice on that still sounded good, that had a pretty good amount of effects on them and uh, you know, just something I could mess with, something I could be creative with and inspired to when I actually played. So I did a lot of research for about three or four months and came up with, uh, narrowed it down to a few different amps. One of them was a PV Viper. Uh, another one was an orange. Another one was this Black Star. I was very against Black Star for a while. I thought they were cheap amps. I just didn't uh, have a high opinion of them. I'm not sure why. I'd never played one before. But I'll be honest, this is one of the best amps I've ever played. I wouldn't use this for uh, professional performances necessarily or um, touring, but it's uh, it's definitely a really, really good amp. It's got a really good sound to it. It's louder than I would expect it to be. It's super light and it's got a lot of features that you can update with USB. So let's, uh, let's take a listen and see what it sounds like. So on the left over here, you have your input. You also have your phone headphones out and your line in if you want to do like a MP3s or some of the music that you want to come through here while you're playing. I haven't used that yet, but it's pretty cool. Voice. There are different settings for your amp. They go all the way from clean, clean warm, clean bright, crunch, super crunch, overdrive one, overdrive two. I'm going to start it off on there for right now. Gain is the amount of kind of distortion, if you want to call it that. Volume level, EQ, and this is a little bit different. It's not just like bass and treble. This is kind of like the amp voicing. So if you have it all the way on zero, it'll be kind of like more of a nasally higher mid Marshall sound. If you have it all the way on 10, it's going to be a little thicker bottom end sound like a Mesa Boogie. Since I'm kind of a Mesa Boogie fan, I usually end up keeping it kind of like right around there. Over here are your different effects, and you can use the different effects in lots of different ways. Um, each one of these you press will have a different setting on here. If I press modulations, there's different settings. There's one, two, three, and four. Two, three, four. And then there's different settings in between, like a whole bunch of different number ones, a whole bunch of different number twos. And each one of these would be either, a, and I don't have them memorized, but they'll be like a phaser, a flanger, a chorus, and different things like that, your modulation effects. Turn those back off. Delays are your different delays, and there's all different kinds of delays. Same thing, each one of these is a little bit different delay, and each one of these has different parameters within the delay. Reverb are different reverbs you can use. So basically you turn these on once to, to use that effect, turn off again to shut it off. If you click one and you go to another one, it'll keep that other one on, meaning that's armed. So now whatever I set on modulation is on there. However, I'm now adding something else over here. So your current effect that's active that you'll be setting will be the one that's in green. If you want to go back and shut modulation off, then you go back to it and shut it off. And that'll be the one that's left on, so it'll default to there. We'll turn them all off right now. We're going to start on the very basic setting over here. And we'll put it at a normal volume, kind of uh, right around there. Going to be a little bit brighter sounding. You can tell. Warm, bright. a little bit more gain sounding. I typically use that one quite a bit when I'm practicing. And this setting is also where you can notice this EQ effect. So if I turn it all the way down to more of a Marshall sound. So 
you can definitely tell it's a lot more Mesa Boogie, warmer sounding over here. Neither one's better, but it's kind of a personal preference. We'll leave it right here in the middle for right now. Putting the gain a little bit lower, stay right around there. Super Crunch has a little more volume and a lot more gain on it. Super Crunch is what I used for the Motley Crue series that I was doing a lot too long ago. And Overdrive 1 and 2 should just take it more to a higher gain level. Overdrive 1 being a little bit warmer. Overdrive 2 being a little more trebly. For right now, let's go back to crunch and I'll show you some of the effects. So modulation one, this very first one. You can tell if I have it all the way down, you barely hear it. It's not too noticeable. When you turn it up, it's a little more intense. Second one. It's more of a flanger. I'll put it towards the end so you can hear it a little better. It's kind of cool. course but it's not real obvious this last one is kind of a tremolo one other thing I didn't note, this level affects these a little bit differently. It'll affect sometimes it's the volume, sometimes it's the speed, sometimes it's the intensity, but this one does different things depending on the parameters of this and what can be set. So that's kind of cool. This tap feature is for delays and for different things like this. Like this one, if I tap it faster, if I go like one, two, three, four, a little bit slower. A little faster. Let's go to the next effect, delay. Put that one back in the middle. What's that one sound like?
these last ones all the way up is usually like a very intense one that doesn't stop. It's the same way for the reverb and some of the other ones. So just be careful because it'll blow your speaker out if you don't, uh, if you let it just go on and on. Let's see what I can do with this. Some things I love about this amp, it's a great looking amp. It looks really good. It's very light, it's easy to carry around. It has a lot of different features and although you can't hear it on here, um, there are, when you play like certain stereo uh, delays, so when you're hearing different echoes and bouncing things, if you have it in a room, you can actually hear it bouncing from different sides of the room. It's a very, very cool effect that you can only experience if you're actually sitting and playing one of these in person. And I would highly recommend you go to play one of those. It's really cool and it always impresses my band members when I play it for them. For $150 solid state amp, it's, uh, it's really, really good. It's got pretty good tones. I would consider using it uh, just for recording purposes for small things. I've actually used it on the channel when I did uh, anything that you hear me on electric for the most part, up until now at least, has been on here. I did the whole Motley Crue series recorded out of here. I think it was on the, uh, the Super Crunch channel. And it's very, very light and mobile. So for the purposes of moving it around the house, whatever I need to, for instance, if I want to watch TV and bring my amp with me, or if I want to go over a friend's house and have a couple beers and jam with them, not with a big drum set, but maybe another guitar player, and I want to sound decent, but I don't want to haul my 200 pound Mesa Boogie stuff, this is perfect for that, absolutely great. Okay, some cons, some things I don't necessarily like. It's not super loud, which is no fault of the amp, it's not supposed to be. It's not, uh, if, you're, if you're looking to use this for a band, it's not quite loud enough for that. Maybe one of their higher end models, uh, Stereo 40. It's a 40 watt. Um, 40 watts, especially solid state, are not loud enough for like any kind of a band. Um, especially not if you're gonna have a drummer or if you're playing any kind of rock music. And if you crank this up too loud, the sound gets worse, like any solid state amp. Um, tube amps actually sound better the more the more you crank them up. Other than that, that's the only thing I can think of. That's the only kind I can think about. It's a great little amp. I love playing on it. I love having it around the house. Um, there's a link in the description below for this amp. If you have any questions, you'd like me to do some more demos on it or, uh, or anything at all, let me know. Also, for the record, I do not have an endorsement deal with Blackstar or anything. I just like them a lot. Uh, if anything, I'm trying to get one for Mesa Boogie because I do like them. I've been playing with them for years. Um, and I'll be having that, my Mesa Boogie's on the show very, very soon. It's a fantastic amp for, I can rant and rave about why they're such amazing amps. But for this show, I absolutely agree. This is the perfect practice amp for pretty much anybody, any style of music. Uh, anybody who's, uh, you know, needs a good amp at a smaller volume, but you want a lot of good sound, a lot of good solid sounds. You want it to be pretty versatile. You want it to be able to move around pretty easily. And uh, you can hook up a foot switch to it. You can do a lot of different things to control the tempo and control the different settings. You can hook it up to USB, and I think there are different presets you can put in here. So there's an endless amount of possibilities. I was very, very impressed with this amp, and I kind of wanted to not like it at first because I thought it was a cheap little uh, solid state crappy practice amp. But this cheap little solid state crappy practice amp is pretty awesome. I'd highly recommend you check it out. Uh, and that's about it. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video. B roll. <laughs>